Okay, so this is an example of how we do initial tracking and drive enhancement. So first of all, you gotta realize you cannot do this if you don't have full bowl of food all the time. If not, you'll create food aggression. So these guys have food constantly, 100% of the time. So as you see here, two full bowls. This is all the time. So these are down a little bit because they've eaten this morning, but again, they start every day with these two big, huge bowls. So now we do lots of toys. They have toys from a very young age. So here we have, uh, so they're ready to do toy guard. Now they're used to toys of every kind, of every um, texture. So we're gonna do that. But now what we're gonna do, now they're used to high value treats. So I'll show you these. Go right here, in the middle of remodel, excuse me, painting. So these are high value treats. We create a great deal of drive, but again, I don't want food competition. So, I'm gonna try to move myself to a better angle where I can get a better view here. Excuse me, I'm not good at this camera stuff. I'll get better, and my camera's kind of like that. So I want the most area. So, how we increase food drive and tracking ability using their nose is the toys are all thrown out into the toys. And you notice nobody's being aggressive. Everybody's in a hurry. We don't hear any aggression. Okay, because they're well fed. We do this. They know there's lots of toys. So it's about looking through the toys with their nose to find the goodie. So this increases food drive. And again, if you don't have enough food down, this will only create food aggression. So in order to create tracking puppies, you don't want them to be food aggressive. That's a myth. You want them to have food drive. And some people will tell you that depriving them of food does that. They have a plain kibble, nothing special. Just enough to make sure it's nutritious. They do not get high value food treats. But when we do this, again, they're looking all the way through the toys, searching continuously. Now, the best part about this too is that some will be missing, but it also increases them to continue to use their nose without an immediate reward. They know to just look, they're looking for something. So they continue to look. And another thing it does is the more that you do this, the more it has them stick to it. It creates uh, the ability to stick to the track longer. They're more willing to be dedicated to the task. They're still searching. Quite a few of those toys have been gone, and I'm standing here right in that little area with them. They're continuing to look carefully in and out of everywhere. This is, again, now I could, right now we're just creating food drive without food aggression, right? Now the other thing is now you can't do this independent of they have to have an independent lesson, which I will film separately. Obviously you have to do it separate. This is about food drive. I don't try to hand feed them now that things are too excited. So we also have separate areas though where we do hand feeding where they know how to take a goodie carefully. But they've searched it. Now the thing is, is the one thing I wanna make sure is they've gone through here multiple times with their noses before they've decided it's finally, okay, I've checked everywhere now. I fully checked all of the zone for the item I'm looking for. Okay, now, what they're, where are they all back to? Now that they've checked the item for the zone, the first thing they do is, another thing is learning to retrieve back to me to look for that. They've looked at it, they found all the things they want, and the focus is coming back to me. Okay, what else do we have to do? All of them are all very interested in that. We do a lot of eye contact. So you'll see all of them are normally looking right up. Hi, baby. They're always looking. They make All of them make very good eye contact. Look at those very good ears. Very, very cute. Good kids, huh? The big boy right there. Again, these guys will stick to it. They are very, very driven. Sense, thinking, okay, they're that. So we're gonna do another high drive food one so you can see, again, food drives there. Now this is a beef liver. We do the really high value treats. So, and again, you notice no food aggression. There's a key to that. Again, I need to stress. You cannot accomplish this and these are 10 puppies. Notice there's no aggression. They have no meanness towards the task. They're looking. They're like, I'm looking, I'm looking. And it creates competitiveness. They want to find the item faster, which increases their drive for the finding of the item. And later on, their drive towards finding whatever you want them to. So this is a tracking uh, enhancement trick we do with all the puppies. 
So all of our puppies that come from here come with this type of thing. And if again, you'll notice they're looking all around the objects. Now, just so that you realize that this isn't done with just high value toys, treats, right? We have another item and I should have that down. I thought I did. And I can't pause this stinking video on this uh, process. Okay. Now, the other thing is, is so to know that they've been sent aware. Now they move the items, sound, clicker trainings are real, really susceptible to clicker training. Everybody sits out of tension, if you'll notice. So it's very easy to say, okay, well you can train your puppy to find the treat. We create all kinds of high value items here. So. This is a green item. They heard it. Just a couple to show you. It's Chlorelia. So it's a green treat, which is really good for them. It's been their thing, but it's not food. It's not a food food item. They know an item went down. They know what the item is. I showed it first on the ground. Put a couple down so they can see what it was. Hear the little crunching, they're little crunchies. So we did a chicken, freeze-dried chicken. We did freeze-dried beef. You think, okay, well, we're so driven, we just want food, we just want the good stuff. No, this is good stuff too. This is just another type of thing and the drive is for it and they, they learn to drive for fun. This is competitive. This is where using the natural competitive between them without the aggression, low aggression, high competitive. They will compete with each other as long as they're not hungry. Again, no hunger, full bowls. So this is what non-hungry puppies will do when in a competitive nation. And they've been doing this since they were very young. We have started this type of training since they were probably around five weeks old. So they've had at least five weeks of this type of find the treat, find the encouragement, use your nose. We're always about use your nose. And then come back and wait attentively and patiently for the next part of the, dr the drill. Again, they're going to fiddle with each other because they haven't been given a command. They just know nothing's going to happen unless they come back and they sit politely at attention. So they're like, we've looked. I've looked completely. Now, if you'll see over here, this is, I'm sure, one of my two that is extremely... They have two or three of them that will outlast the others. They will keep looking a long time. Almost all of them, though, will go through at least the whole program three to four times to ensure themselves they've used their nose and they can't find anything else. Now, one of the nice things about this is there's nothing left. They, there is a competitiveness to doing it. If I don't throw anything else, the next thing they do, well, they'll go back for another round. Let's see if I missed something. They'll go back to using their noses, back to seeing what they can find. All of my puppies are always focused on what we can find. Now, again, we have my two over Nah, yeah, one of my two in there. My male. He likes to lick my other male's face, and then he get, the other male gets a little grouchy with him, so he snips his nose. Not enough to hurt him, but enough to make him upset. Dogs. That's what happens. So these are ten puppies in here. So now, again, like I said, we have hype. Now, the nice way is once you want to pick a toy for them to play with, um, it's easy to just limit them down to that one toy. But they've started from a very young age, and then it also... I, they focus on the toys instead of eating everything they're not supposed to. It's kind of helpful when they go to a home. They go to a home, these guys are used to playing with toys. All you have to do when you get them is refocus them towards whatever toy you want. Whenever they're on something you don't want, give them what you do want. And they are very toy aware, so don't have any excuses for yourself. But these puppies won't somehow, don't know how to play with their toys like they're supposed to. Give them their toys. Say, play with your toys online. <laughs> Learn the my stuff thing. We have a thing of what's my stuff. That's your stuff. This is my stuff. But, but again, we have no aggression. And some of them are still looking around. They're like, well, they're playing with their toys because they usually will. But they know that the thing is done. This is my little girl here. So you can tell she's extra attentive. She's like, what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? This is my little one I'm keeping here. She is a dark sable that received the agouti coloring and the Malinois mask. So she is quite adventurous. She's got super black legs, and, that, and she's the littlest one. I'm not sure how big she's going to get. We thought she was a full dwarf, but she's catching up a little bit now. She was the runt. 
All right, well, there's our little video for now. Okay, first one.